gives the animation volume. Okay, oh, this is a nice frame, look at that. Gaining size, and I'm like, oh gosh, it's gonna set me on fire. <laughs> You're gonna feel a nicely placed impact frame. Arcane season two, there are two trailers up from what I can see online. I am a 2D animator, I'm a professional 2D animation producer, director, artist. Some of these shots I found appealing and for those shots I've pulled them into uh, my animation software so we can look at them frame by frame. To start with, this still shot from a storyboarder's perspective is like my favorite shot in the trailer. It's the one that I learned the most from, you know? The composition is super strong. We have these lines kind of leading to nowhere it looks like. I think this could be the walkway onto a ship of some kind. Super strong composition. We've got these flat horizon lines, things piercing into the skyline that kind of looks like debris and rubble and things. And the moon is what's lighting the scene. We've got a nice rim light around her shoulders there. The light kind of casting onto all the different parts of this composition. The moon itself, is a fantastic shape. We've got enough here in this widescreen aspect ratio to see that it's a circle, but then these clouds cut into that perfect circle. And from a designer's perspective, this is really well played, in my opinion. We've got the little hint of the blue here that's really adding something nice to the scene as well. So it's not just monocolor. There is a little bit of dark blue here and when you go far away enough from the red light. There are nice shots and there are really nice shots. This is a really nice shot, I think. So let's have a look at this. The, now the trailer really cut these parts together very quickly. So this is actually the first frame. There's this intense glowing. You can see it's been really nicely composited because we, we have these light rays. You can see the, the shafts of light coming outwards from that. That's definitely done in compositing stage. This was the initial flash of an explosion. You're gonna start to see patterns here if you study enough of these Fortiche effects animation explosions. Their team have a, a very particular process I think they go through with one of these. Their explosions always follow the same stages, which is what gives them that Fortiche look. Now this flash is, is kind of shrinking inwards. Oh, okay, there's a little bit of a going back out. So it's a little bit of a boom, boom like that. Okay, now it comes way in. And now we can see there's a certain beam. This looks like it's drawn frame by frame. Really nice composition here, you know? We can see from the leading lines here and from the orb, it directs us and the composition, you know, this kind of shattered uh, church window creates this very nice shape, very nice composition again. Somewhere around here is where the explosion is. You, you're drawn to that immediately with this flash coming back in. Okay, wow, it's nighttime. <laughs> but we've had this shot illuminated. So even when the flash goes away, we understand what it is we're looking at. This is the rooftop, we're looking up at it. And now we've got this direction. Let's take a look at the effects animation. We've got this zap, I call it a zap. It's like this, these electrical lines that look really chaotic that's often in the magic uh, elements of, of Arcane. And we've got a very clear direction coming up here. Okay, and all the effects animation is gonna be supporting this direction. This particular zap here that I'm interested in, it isn't just random on every frame because the, the next one, you can see it kind of shoots along the shaft and this kind of diminishes around here. These two frames kind of follow on from each other, then it changes, right? Then it kind of does this. So it starts out, we've got this one, which is the strong pose. Then we've got the diminished version of that pose. Then it completely changes its pose again. And now it's just gently kind of moving along that way. Started as an uninterrupted line and we're following that direction a little bit. So maybe it, it widens a little bit at these peaks and then it becomes more about the individual parts as it disperses, right? Diminish down those parts. And I'm doing this just in a red pen, you know, because this is my diagramming color. Put a few dots on just to have it diminish more. There we go. So you can see it kind of diminishes like so. You might want to have it diminish at the back first. So it kind of uh, disappears from the end upwards. That could look cool. 
This one, they've actually just had it diminish to a certain amount and then it just kind of disappears. And you can see just from the colors, actually, there's a few different layers going on here. There's like a foreground poof of smoke that's clinging to this beam as it goes up. The glow is around here, so there's the most energy and it kind of dissipates the further away you get from the tip of that. And this is how I know it kind of looks like something that's self-propelled. This part here, the smoke or dust or magic, whatever you want it to be, is following the projectile, right? It's following the projectile. But then when you get around here, this part is actually propelled away from the projectile. You can see that. It's moving down. Do you see it moving gently down this way? This shot here is pretty cool as well. You've got lots of different colors, first of all. You've got the red, which is kind of like an entry glow, a, a bit like a spaceship returning to Earth. You've got the green glow at the front, yellow glow here, and at the back, you've got this kind of booster, which is this bright magical blue, the lightning bolts, and a kind of flare here. You've got your intensity lines. You'll have seen these a lot in animes. They're kind of emanating out from a vanishing point, which is somewhere off on the side uh, around here. So we've got some perspective to the scene. There's a lot of camera shake and we're following this projectile, right? Now all of this lightning, to my knowledge, is drawn frame by frame. And then we arrive, once the intensity picks up because the booster is in frame, very nice. And now we kind of enter into this impact frame, if you like. Impact frame's really popular right now. It's like very much the fashion, the very in vogue <laughs> for animation. There's a good reason why. They add a lot to a scene. They pack that punch. They give it that little shot of intensity that maybe you don't notice it straight away, but you feel it. You're gonna feel a nicely placed impact frame. The rocket booster on the back really just kicks into overdrive. And we've got a second one here. Now this is interesting. Look at this. Now the colors are kind of inverted. A few frames ago, this was like very dark and this was white. So the lightning bolts here are dark. Okay. And it works really well. I love all of these shapes that are drawn here, these little wisps. I love how this is kind of broken down into these sketchy little parts and components. This whole frame is hand drawn from what it looks like. There's no artifacts of 3D within this. The frames are completely traced over the top by the effects artist on these impact frames. And then there's further compositing over this. Like if you look at how this blue kind of bleeds over into the dark lightning bolts, you can see it very clearly here, here. That's the work of the compositors. Okay, look at that. So this is the emanating point from the rocket booster. And I love these, look at this, beautiful. Beautiful shapes. I just love seeing these in the hands of a really confident artist. With a effects animation like that, you've got to pay attention to the negative shapes as well as the positive shapes. So you could interpret this as a positive shape if you're looking at the white, and that's a positive shape. But then the negative shape will be things like this that are indenting into it here, here, here. Those are the negative shapes, right? Potentially, maybe this is an extra layer. So it's, it's kind of built up in layers. I imagine this dark blue um, will be a different layer. This is all cell shaded as well. Quite complex cell shading here. You can see that there's a kind of line of separation of division here, here. So there's a lot of cell shading going on, which creates a bit more detail and gives everything volume, gives the animation volume. Okay, oh, this is a nice frame, look at that. So this here, oh, look at that. Boom, it's gone outward and we're like in this tunnel. That's so cool. This is one big beam that we're right up next to, given the perspective, right? And there's lovely shapes within there. There's a lovely hierarchy of shapes and detail in there. But then also we've got this, little ring going to the other side of us. So we're actually inside this little cocooned tunnel for this for this frame, looks lovely. We've still got some lightning. They love adding lightning to things. You see it everywhere in these trailers. They love these little lightning bolts. It's just a way you can spruce up the frame, make it feel alive. Hmm, yes, lovely, I love that. Lots and lots of layers to this. Look, what's this? What is this thing here? I believe that looks like a sonic boom. Let's see if this is a sonic boom. Yes, it is. So you see that lovely ring that's coming out. One really clever animator somewhere um, 
chose to do it and then everyone was like, wow, that looks amazing. And now everyone does it, <laughs> but no complaints. I mean, it's, this is actually very informed by the real world. There are fighter jets that break the sound barrier that create a sonic boom like this nice thick solid ring, but that's gonna dissipate now. So look, we've got these negative shapes that are eating into the positive shapes, very nice. And now they're gonna get bigger. Those negative shapes are gonna get bigger. But look at this. Do my eyes deceive me? This scenery behind is actually getting warped by this ring. So this is really good attention to detail by the compositing department. Yeah, look, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see the roof? just changes there. Yeah, so look, that's not even bendy. Once the ring's gone, it's not even bendy. So, let me just show you that. So it actually distorts the, the background behind. That's a really nice effect by the uh, compositing department on that. Looks really cool, I'm gonna play it for you. Two rocket shots there that I think look very nice, very impressive. So yeah, this shot really stood out to me. I love this shot from the trailer. One little trick that 3D artists pull sometimes in order to really pull out the perspective, this hand will be its own separate model if they wanna really push things. I don't know if they still do it like this. They might have a different way nowadays, but when you create like a separate hand model for this shot, it means that you have more control over how big the hand is in the shot, what the character in the background looks like. They can really arrange it graphically to look just perfect. And then when it plays, we don't have a lot here, but you can see that, you can see that here, they don't need to really show the, uh, the rest of the arm. And maybe I'm wrong. It might be that they actually did have this all as one model. But if I was doing this in 2D, that's exactly what I would do. I also really like the detail of these stars. If you look at like Hubble Space Telescope photography like this, you can see that the stars really do have this kind of cross flare and they clearly paid very close attention to the real space photography and the kind of artifacts that are left on that space photography, like here with the cross flare. It's even at the same exact angle that they chose they painted it really well where it does look a lot like some of this space footage. I also kind of like that the stars are occupying the character as well. So you can see that the hood is also filled with stars. I like it. This is such a strong image to me. Yeah, this whole shape is really cool. The fingers really feel like they're big. There's a lot of depth in this composition and it's just flashed up on the screen just for a moment. And I was like, whoa. And I also really like this shot. This just flashed up for a moment as well. The eyes would be around here somewhere. <laughs> but then they open. Wow. They've got the little wisps on the shoulder corners. I think that's good because it kind of creates, kind of makes the silhouette cooler, you know, that the shoulders aren't, aren't just rounded. They're like pointy. It's a little bit demonic in a way. Same with the corners of the head. But then you've got this part that's whipping around. Look at that. It's edgy, you know, it's got that, edge to it, that, that sharp corner here. And then it just whips round and it's all frame by frame and it's very stroked, you know, it's brush strokes. You see this bit, tendrils are unfolding and then it's just very, 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 very thin. I would have liked to have seen more of this shot. Obviously uh, it does probably go on for much longer in the actual series, but just as a little teaser, it's a nice shot, isn't it? It really does make you like, oh yeah, I'd like to see more of that and it kind of moves, kind of diminishes that way. Back in, back into the figure. See it's moving back in. And this one's probably gonna do the same thing. It's gonna come around and work its way, yeah, it's gonna work its way back into the figure. So it's kind of doing like this kind of thing all around him. The last bit that I wanna break down, this is one of those bits in the trailer that actually just really surprised me. It just took me off guard, you know? She holds up this candle flame. The candle flame drops, but it drops at us. It drops towards us, which just threw me off. Like I thought this candle flame was just gonna go down, right? I hadn't quite realized that we're looking up at her and we're kind of beneath her. So she must be kind of bent over us a little bit. And so it kind of surprised me, but in a good way, it surprised me in a good way when this flame starts just 
gaining size and I'm like, oh gosh, it's gonna set me on fire. <laughs> <laughs> See, if this were me, I'd be kind of flapping it a little bit like a flag, you know? Like the flag flapping in the wind. That's how I do my flames. If I take that and put it on fours, then, you know, you can have like... You can do it just with a very simple flag waving type of movement like that. So you've got this stick that's slowly, slowly turning. You can kind of tell the scale of a flame by the amount of detail. And this is actually more detailed than a, than a match. Like a match would just be a blob. Like a match could just be a blob like this, right? So that's very clever by them because now just by the effects animation alone, you can kind of tell that this isn't a match stick, but it's actually a torch, which is kind of thematic of what's happening in the story, right? So yeah, smart art direction to choose to make it more of a torch than a matchstick flame. Give it more detail. Let the viewers work out that it's a torch instead. See that little bit form, that little bit of negative space forming on the side and then working its way up. It's gonna keep going through. Okay, and now it cuts into the whole thing. To help yourself with these effects animations, you can create things like that in a diagram over the top just to see where things go. And you can see these little pieces of detail that evolve and move their way upwards. Look at this one. I'm gonna end that there. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. This channel is all about 2D hand-drawn animation. I have a lot more videos like this one in store ready to come out soon. So subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to see them when they come out. And if you wanna to learn to make animations for yourself, not just admiring as a spectator, I have in-depth step-by-step courses on animatorguild.com that you can use to acquire these skills for yourself. Let me know what you'd like to see next on the channel. I can create a walkthrough of how to recreate effects like these ones. I can break down more scenes and material. I can analyze other animations. I'm open to suggestions. Leave them in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.